This has all the makings of a horror film. Imagine a big hole opening up and swallowing an entire house instantly. With people inside. Hi, I'm Chuck Vosberg from Next Home Gulf to Bay. Along with my wife, Pat. We're your favorite realtors, and Florida made the national news again, and this time it was for a sinkhole, and this was a famous sinkhole. It's opened up for the third time, and the first time that it opened, it swallowed a whole house with somebody in it, and that person was never recovered. So I want to tell you all about it and how to avoid sinkholes and kind of how they work and, and how houses get repaired if there's a sinkhole under them and the house doesn't get swallowed. Sinkholes run the gamut from a little indentation in the ground or just, you know, as much as just an inch or two of subsidence to full-blown holes that appear out of nowhere and will take part of a road or part of a house or, or even in the case of this one, an entire house in a very short period of time. So I want to kind of explain what sinkholes are, what they're all about, and, and kind of put to rest some of the, the myths that are out there about them. Sinkholes aren't super common here in Florida, but they do happen, and that's something that we need to be aware of. So let me explain first how sinkholes happen. There's two main ways that a sinkhole can happen. The most common way is that our ground here in Florida is mostly, it's got a layer of dirt and sand and clay. And so we've got that layer. And then underneath that layer, there's a layer of limestone. And the limestone, it's kind of porous. It's got cracks and things in it. And, and that stores our underground water. So if there's changes in that underground water, it can cause weakness. But more commonly, and for you scientific folks out there, correct me if if I've got anything that I'm leaving out or anything's wrong, because I'm not a scientist, but my understanding is the most common way is rainfall that's slightly acidic will percolate down into this limestone. And over time, it'll cause some erosion of the limestone and a cavity can form. And then the ground above it isn't supported adequately and it can either dip in a little bit or in an extreme case, cave in over that cavity. So that's the kind, that's what you see in the news is when there's one of those catastrophic major sinkholes that happen quickly. The most common ones, and you can see them around the state, it's just a little indentation. They're usually circular and they, they don't really do any harm. Now, as far as houses are concerned, if you have any subsidence at all around your property, it's going to cause foundation issues. You'll see cracks in the foundation. It'll appear as cracks in the walls and uh, the doors won't close right. That's, that's the most common kind of subsidence we see. So we've got the sinkhole that I described before, and then there's another kind of sinkhole that is from organic reasons. We just had a house recently where when the neighborhood was built, the builder buried all the trees and stuff that they took down to make room for the houses. Well, you're not supposed to do that because eventually the trees and stuff that you bury are going to decay and, and they'll just kind of compress. Well, that's what happened to this house was all this organic material that was buried under the house started to decay and, and the house sunk a little bit. So cracks started happening. And the way that sinkholes are typically repaired are engineers will come out, they'll do some boring tests to find out what they're dealing with and determine the best course of action. There's a lot of different ways it can be remediated, but most commonly we see where some kind of material is injected in under. It's kind of like a con concrete kind of material, usually. They call it grout. And that to stabilize any kind of crevices or the area underneath, and then they bore down all around the house with metal poles. And they bore those down until they hit good solid rock. Once they do that, they jack the house up to make it perfectly level and put brackets. So the house is actually supported by these poles that go down to the ground underneath. So the reason I'm telling you all this is because there are houses around that have had mediation. And mediation works. But it presents a problem. The problem is twofold. Your insurance is going to be a lot more. 
And secondly, it's it's a real big problem for resale because people are a little skittish about anything that's had subsidence. Now, like in the house that I described before where it was organic subsidence, they had all the engineering reports. They were able to prove the nature of the problem and how it was repaired. So they were able to get insurance. But not all houses that have had subsidence either have reported it or know exactly what's going on because they haven't paid the money to have that engineering done. It's very, very expensive to remediate a sinkhole damage. So what does that mean to you if you're a buyer or a seller? The problem is, is that a lot of realtors don't know which areas are more common for sinkholes. Now, Pat and I do know, we've done a tremendous amount of research on this, and let's say you're a buyer and you want to buy in a certain area, and we know that that area is known for sinkhole activity. We're going to do a bunch of research and find out not about just that property, but about all the surrounding properties and see if anybody nearby has had a sinkhole. Because with insurance companies, they're going to look around the house. And if there's any properties around that house that have had a sinkhole, well, guess well, guess what? They're going to assume that that property is a higher risk as well, and you're going to have to pay more for insurance. But we see this time and time again where sellers don't even know that the house right next door had a major sinkhole remediation, and, and they're sitting right next to it. And unfortunately, that greatly reduces the value of their property because of its proximity to a sinkhole and they may not have even known that when they bought it and we see that a lot so if you're a buyer it's critical that you get a realtor who's very adept at finding these sinkhole areas now of course these do happen and nobody knows but still we want to put all the odds in your favor now if you're a seller if you know anything about sinkholes you have to disclose it and we've seen a lot of cases where people failed to disclose it uh, for one reason or another. I'm, I'm not saying that they're being dishonest. They may not know, to be fair. But we've seen a lot of cases. I'd say probably half of the cases where we know there's a sinkhole problem because of the research we did, but the owner of the property did not know, or, or at least they say they didn't know. And the agent didn't know either because they didn't check. So that presents a problem. It's something you really have to be aware of here in Florida. And I'm not saying this to scare you because there's a lot of areas that are perfectly safe and it's just a matter of doing the research and finding out if there's gonna be a sinkhole nearby, there might be a danger of a sinkhole at your property. So that's something that we always check on. And I know I'm going on and on about this because it's such a big topic, but if you purchase a sinkhole house, your resale is going to be very, very difficult. And it, it's just the way it is because people are a little bit leery about something that's had a problem like that. So let me know in the comments. Uh, for you scientific folks that know a lot more than I do, let me know if I'm off base on any of this or if there's anything I'm leaving out. I want to learn more too. And let me know if you've had any experience with this. I'd love to hear your comments, and of course, any questions that you have, Pat and I are happy to answer anything. We put humans over houses, so you can ask us anything. No strings attached. We won't try and make you buy anything. We just want to help people out. Humans over houses are our motto. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.